Welcome to Lessons in Leadership. I'm Steve Arbaro. This is, I know, I don't know the order of the shows, but this is the final show that we're actually taping out of this particular home studio in this particular home where I've lived with my wife, Jennifer, for 20 years. Oh, Hopefully we'll, I, I really, I, I feel, I have a regret. I, I wish I got like a cake or flowers that uh, Scarlin could present to you or something. Scarlin behind the camera, who brought absolutely nothing today other than his talent and his hard work. So I, again, I don't know the order of the shows, but I want to say this. Uh, not only do I want to thank Mary for Lessons in Leadership, who helps make this show not only compelling and meaningful and productive, but it is a lot of fun. We had this idea several years ago, and here it is now. But behind the scenes to Elvin, can Elvin, can, can Elvin show himself, or does he have to get all this warning to show himself? Right here, sir. Hey, buddy. Uh, we said this show had a little more flexibility, so I'm going to do this. Um, uh, by the way, you ever hear Elvin do this? Elvin, could you move your camera a little bit because the top of your head's being... Can you know? <laughs> See what Steve, well, let me, can I fill our audience in what Steve is yeah, doing I, right I, now? I, always, I think everybody hears what he says. Yeah, no. So before we get on every single episode, Elvin is our director, as you can see there on screen. And he's always behind the screen, giving cues to our guests, telling them to move the camera up, move it down, little to the left, little to the right, little up, little down. And uh, so that's why Steve was busting his chops right there. And he's our leader. Um, Thank hey, you, Steve. Um, let me do this before I bring in Frank and Scarlin, who... I don't know how he gets from, he can do that. Wait, Scarlett, don't get on camera yet. Um, <laughs> Elvin, let me ask you this. Yes, sir. Biggest leadership lesson you have learned, not so much from this series, but in your terrific work as a director and doing a whole range of other things as a leader in the world of broadcasting and media. What would you say the most important lesson you've learned is? The most important lesson that I've learned is uh, as a director, I have to lead a team. And I always realize that I have to look at myself when I look at my team. So I treat them the same way that I want to be treated. I never lie to them. I always tell them the truth. We have a good time, but when it's time to work, we all work. And if you respect people and you treat them the right way, they'll treat you. They'll respect you when you when it's time for you to tell them what to do. Quick follow up on that. By the way, that was that was really good. Uh, really good. And, he, and he's so been listening. He he's been listening. This is like free training for Elvin no, and Scarlett and Frank. It is. It is. Yeah, that's what, yeah. Except without this show, that's the way he's been living his life and the way he's been way before us. Hey, I got to ask you something. Um, and by the way, people who think things are rehearsed, I, I didn't say anything to our team. They'd be doing this. Elvin, let me ask you, he's directing the show and he's on the show. Uh, Elvin, let me ask you this. One of the things I've known about you and we've worked together in studios and in this setting is I've never seen you, no matter what goes wrong and things go wrong, we'll be talking about logistics in just a few moments with uh, Essex County Executive Joe DiVincenzo, you'll see that interview. Things go wrong, I don't care how good you are. Things go wrong, you never raise your voice, you never seem to be peeved, um, and you never lose your cool. Where does that come from? Because I, I, I gotta learn that. So here's the, here's the thing. Uh, I had a really good trainer growing up. Uh, her name was Audra D. West, and she trained me how to direct. And she always said, you can't let your crew see you sweat. Because once you start to scream and yell and freak out, then they start to freak out because they don't know what's happening. So as long as you keep your composure, your crew will be fine and everything will be under control. Do you practice that at home? I, I try, but <laughs> I have four kids. <laughs> they drive my wife and I crazy. And since we've all been home for the past year, it's, it's been rough. By the way, you said they. Like, who, who are they? Just tell everyone who, who they are. I have a 17-year-old daughter, Nia. Uh, she's off to college next year. I have three boys, Aiden, Elijah, and Joshua, who are 12, 9, and 8. You're good at time management, are you not, sir? I try. Yeah. I ha you have to be. You do have to be. And, and yes. I just want to, because this is our informally last show, I, I wanted to do that with Elvin and say thanks. Hey, Frank, could Frank come on camera? Frank is our audio engineer, and he's way more than that. Hey, Frank, how you doing, my friend? How are you? How long have we been together? A couple of years? Just a couple, probably <laughs> around 30 at this point. 30 years. So, so and you started Elvin, when you were 10. Alone. Elvin, leave it alone. Oh, thank you, Mary. <laughs> uh, started, Steve knew, knew me when I was 22. Yeah, well, I was just getting out of high school. And um, Frank, you, let me tell you something. Uh, you're, you're not just technically great. Um, you're not just an expert at what you do. You're just a really good decent, caring human being who is a leader in every way and an entrepreneur. 
your sense of being a really good leader slash really good person comes from, came from? Uh, my parents, my father was an entrepreneur as well. He was a musician, uh, played for many, many Didn't you have me interview your dad back, back in the day? You did at the Bell Atlantic building. Uh, I remember. Where we were still doing the shows there. That's right. Um, you and Raphael. And then my mom, she was she was an entrepreneur as well. And so they both had to lead because being a, a, an entrepreneur, you have to show folks what to do. You have to do things yourself. And that's one of the biggest leadership lessons I learned is that I, I when I have to lead crews for staging or for television, there's nothing that I would have them do that I wouldn't do myself. So I have to let them see that I'll jump right in, help clean things up, even though I'm the engineer, the A1, in most cases now, I was not always that. So right. in order to become a good leader, I had to become a better follower. And well, that's so what I try to teach people. And by the way, to Sylvester on the back end, who handles all of the editing and post-production, just an extraordinary guy. And by the way, the other thing about leadership is you wind up meeting other people through other really talented, good people. And I believe we only know Sylvester because of Elvin. That is correct. Yeah. And Sylvester, thank you for all your hard work. And also Amy, who does our closed captioning. So I just cannot say enough great things about this team that we've been working with for this past year. And uh, even though this is our last taping in your current studio, we will be continuing taping in your new home studio. So we look forward to continuing the, uh, the partnership moving forward. And Frank, you I'll, 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 I'll let you know, I'll let you know, Steve, that the reason why I know you is through Frank. What? Frank and I used to work together at a church and Frank noticed my talents and he was like, hey, <laughs> hold why on, don't you come on, on. in the church? Oh, could, what were you doing at the I, church? I, used to, I direct church services on Sundays. Oh, that's right. Okay. I did know so, that. I apologize. So Frank was like, how about you come over to NJTV? And that's how I, I met Frank and then that's how I came over to NJTV. Which is now and known I, as NJPBS. Go ahead. Which is now known as NJPBS. So what I did when, when I came to NJTV, I brought Scarlin, who works at CUNY TV, City University of New York Television. Right. I bought Sylvester, who also is their editor there. And I bought Amy, who does closed captioning for them as well, onto the team. Amy's on our team as well, right? She, she does sure closed captioning. She sure is, yep. Yeah. So we, all, we owe this to Frank. Frank, <laughs> Frank, hey, Frank, you're the glue. You're the glue, my friend. <laughs> I'm always you looking out for the production, Steve. We've been together a long time. Listen, just... Being able to, once again, that's other good leadership is being able to bring in good people. Like you said, surrounding yourself with people who know more than you. Um, hey, can I bring Scarlin in? Can we do this? Bring him yeah. in. Yeah. Put your mask How on, Scarlin. He's behind the camera. How do we, come over here and don't be breathing on me. Put your mask on. <laughs> Hold there on. Come on. You got to duck down a little bit. There you go, buddy. Duck down a little bit. Come on over here a little bit. That's Scarlin. Scarlin is literally the best. Elvin... When we came into the studio to set this up, we needed to have someone who our family felt comfortable with, who could run the operation from here. He is the camera operator. But again, like I said about Frank, he's so much more than that. He talk about calm. And by the way, they call ripped. And I hate that. And he just looks really good. He does it. I came in working out the other day. He's shredded. He's all... I come in working out. He goes, uh, did you work out yet? I go, yeah, you can't tell. He goes, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, nice. <laughs> Scott, I know he's not mic'd. Scott, anything you want to take that? Just grab it. Come on over here. Seriously, I'm going to take the camera. Biggest takeaway for you from working together for the last almost a year now. Go ahead. It's uh, three things. You have to, first of all, evolve. You need to be responsible and you need to be a hard worker. You know, you need to be a team player, be up to any circumstances, you know, like you have to be there whenever you're, you're needed. You know, that's, that's, that's the way that you evolve. That's the way that you can learn more things. That's the way that you can um, overcome all the issues that you might have in the future. And even if you're not that as outspoken, you know, I'm, I'm really shy. So uh, sometimes people say, oh, you don't talk. But then when people see me working, that's when people see my real value. Let me ask you this. I don't want to make this about me. Frank has seen me early on in my career, at the earliest, when the great Bill Baker, former head of WNET, brought me in and then to work for Neil Shapiro, our president. And he's seen me at my worst in a studio, overreacting, not being cool, not being calm, being the opposite, frankly, of what we just described with Elvin. 
you got to evolve, right, Frank? You have to evolve. And Steve, you have absolutely evolved. You see all these wonderful people coming on who, who sing your praises and they knew you when they knew your dad. You know, they know your family now. And it, as, as Scarlett said, the evolution is, is, is important. And you, you've done that. You've done that well. Well, I don't want to, but also with Scarlett, he knows that I'm on the, actually the right medication right now. <laughs> hey, listen, I, I, I'll take that back, my friend. Look, look, look at this. Because I can't do it. I'm a great delegator. I cannot I, do anything hey, myself. Hey, Steve, I, I want a Scarlin that could come here and, and fix my <laughs> mic and set up my studio. No, there's I'm only one that. Scarlin. That's right. That's right. Hey, hey, by the way, we block out a show, right? D tell everyone what blocking is, Elvin. We block out a show, and then I, I take the blocks, and I just threw them out. Go ahead. I may have the sweater on that says boss, but Steve does whatever he wants to do. So listen, um, Mary, let's do this. Uh, thank you, Frank. Thank you, Elvin. Thank you, Scarlin. Thank you, Sylvester. Thank you to everyone on our team. Did I miss anyone? No, nope, just Amy. Amy. Not just Amy, oh, and, but Amy. I, sorry, Amy. Amy on the back end with closed caption. Let's let those guys go. Mary, let's, uh, can, we, can we tell everyone who pays for the show? I don't yeah, know if we did that. that, did we? I don't know, but it's always time to do it again. So that's uh, fine. If it's been so long that we can't remember. Uh, we want to thank Prager Metis, Valley Bank, New Jersey Sharing Network, International Union of Operating Engin Engineers, Local 825, Seton Hall University, and the Bacino Leadership Institute, and also 3minuteleadership.com. Uh, they have a great uh, newsletter that goes out every Sunday morning. You can go to that website and register uh, for that. It's really inspirational and takes only three minutes to read. Yep. By the way, see after I put my mask on? Oh, now you got to fix it all up. Well, that's good because we should throw to an uh, a interview. Yeah, by the way, I did this interview with Joe DiVincenzo, the Essex County Executive. <sighs> They're running a great operation um, in terms of COVID vaccine distribution. Some others are struggling mightily. It's not just all about supply. It's about logistics and leadership. And this is the County Executive, Joe D, talking about it. To fully disclose, Joe and I grew up in the same neighborhood. We go back a long way. Um, and Joe, we had you on our vaccine awareness initiative on the public broadcasting side, but I wanted to talk to you about leadership exclusively. I mentioned in that vaccine awareness program that you've been a quarterback in your past. Uh, you worked with my dad at the Northward Center, helped build that, and you've learned a lot about leadership. So here's my question, Joe. I always say no detail too small, and you always struck me as a guy, as a leader, who assumes nothing, and you're in the weeds a lot. Tell leaders why that's important while still stepping back and seeing the big picture. I know it's a complicated question. Go ahead, Joe. It's complicated. One of the things is your father taught me that. Uh, you know, you gotta be able to follow through. It's A through Z and make sure everything's done. But the important thing is about having a good team. You have to build a good team stronger than you. You have to have people around you that are smarter than you. You gotta be able to listen to the people that you're, the team that you're with and tell you what could do and what you can't do. But ultimately I'm gonna make the final decision. And uh, you just gotta continue to work and follow it through. One of my uh, flaws is that I'm too much hands-on. You know, my team <laughs> asks me all the time to step back but it's not in me, you know? That was something that I was taught as far as getting things done, and I like seeing it through. I'm able to sleep better if I do that. It's not anything against my team, it's about me personally, and that's a flaw, yeah. but I'm, I'm trying to improve it, but I don't think so. Joe, I gotta tell you something. I, I, I'm gonna, I have the same flaw, not exactly the same, but I'm gonna tell you right now, I struggle with your this, and let's put son, it on the Steve. table. Steve, What's, you're your father's son. I, Joe, I try to tell my team that. He, this is what I say. I want you to react to this. Remember, this is all about lessons in leadership. Joe just copped to it's a problem for him. I'm not convinced, and I'll tell you why. Joe, I live my life professionally and sometimes personally, but professionally mostly assuming that it's not done until you prove to me that it's done. Don't tell me we're okay. Show me it's done. Show me got it locked down. And I'm sure I know our team is behind the scenes. They hate it. You're the same. Why is that bad, Joe? Well, listen, it's bad because I've been county exec. This is going on my 19th year. And a lot of people that are around the table are still around the table. We know each other very, very well. You know, it's about giving <laughs> confidence and stuff. I try to take a step back, but it's hard for me. Uh, but, you know, because I have a great team. I can count on them. 
but uh, so I, do we, asked, so do I we. asked them to put up. I asked them to put up with me. All right, because that's a problem that I have. Joe, let me ask you though. But here's the thing: we have a great team as well. I want to acknowledge that. But I don't want to obsess over this. But is there, in your mind? A place for a leader, seeing the big picture. You, let me make it clear. And, and just because I'm an Essex County resident, I've known Joe a long time. I know a lot of this. But check out Turtleback Zoo. Check out a lot of the other things that the county is doing that's innovative, creative. So Joe is an innovator. He's creative. He's a way out of the box leader. But I argue you can be that, but also be a detail oriented leader. They're not mutually exclusive. They don't exclude each other, Joe. Well, you're absolutely right, Steve. But, you know, uh... What I do and I, why I feel to be hands-on is if I'm engaged in something, that means my team's going to be engaged. You know, if they see me doing something, that's what they're going to do. With they're passion. going to give you work hard. What Sorry passion? Interrupt, Joe. Passion, I argue, you can't fake it. There's no substitute for it. You can't give it to someone, you say. Um, Can you get your passion? How much of your leadership is based on passion? Uh, probably 99%. <laughs> Was it the same passion. way on the field as a quarterback, Joe? Oh, absolutely. You got to believe in your. You got to believe in yourself. You got to know what you're doing, okay? And that's the leadership because people are going to feed off you as a leader. L let me just say this: Joe's been county executive a long time. I've been doing this for a long time, and here's my view of it. And we have a little more leeway here on lessons in leadership to to editorialize more than we do on the other side. But I'm going to say this, Joe. I argue. When I don't care about those details, when I don't feel passionate about how it looks, I look with the cameras like, when I don't care as much, that's when I'm out, Joe. What about you? That's a, the same, same exact thing. You know, one of the things I'm known for is not only putting this county in financially good shape, but about building. If I stop building, there's no use for Joe D to be here. Everything's got to look great. Everything's got to look beautiful. And we got to continue to build and provide services that are necessary. Uh, you know, I'm the first one in work every day, all right, to making sure that I'm here and I'm working each and every day to motivate my people, all right, that I'm here, I'm going to be watching, and we're going to do this together. And finally, let me say this. Part of leadership is owning it, taking responsibility when things go wrong. Not only does yeah. Joe – why are you shaking your head, Joe? You're absolutely right. You know, you got to take the good and the bad. All right. And when something goes wrong or if somebody makes a mistake on your team, it's not about them. It's about me. And I take the responsibility and I tell them, don't be afraid to make mistakes. All right. If something goes wrong, we'll fix it. But I'll take the responsibility because I'm the leader. Boy, I, uh, Steve Sr., you know, I know he's looking down. He, uh, good or bad, Joe, he influenced us a lot. <laughs> There's, listen to me, there's no question about that. 40 years I've been with him. I mean, you're his son, but 40 years I've been with your father, and he's taught me a lot. You know, good and bad, but mostly good, and how to lead, and how to deal with people, how to go yeah. out and raise money, all right? <laughs> Knowing people have the money, you don't ask somebody for something that they don't have. He always used to say that. Only go after people that you know have money and that want to be supportive. And, and by he the was way, absolutely those right. And whether you're raising money for a project in Essex County, including the 9-11 Memorial, which is extraordinary. And I've been honored since the day Joe and, and the Freeholder Board started that to host that event every year. And Joe, it will be the 20th. I cannot believe it. It'll be the 20th anniversary of the memorial we have. Go ahead, Joe, final words. You know, uh, the, one of the other things that your father taught me was, uh, you know, politically on the side is, how to get money from the governor, have to have relationships with the Senate president, with the assembly speaker. But even there, you have to know where the money's at, whether it's in the DEP, whether it's in community affairs, <laughs> you actually have to show them where the money is and why that they should do this. So uh, I, yeah. I enjoy that. That's what your father taught me is knowing where the money is and go get it. Yeah, same thing in public broadcasting. So, <laughs> Joe, the County Executive, Joe D., uh, thank you for joining us on Lessons in Leadership. All the best to you and your team in Essex. Thank you very much. That was the County Executive in Essex County, Joe DiVincenzo. Mary, before we introduce our very special guest, your biggest takeaway from Joe D. on leadership and logistics is? It's you need to be planners, whether you are leading a town, whether you're leading a business, whether you're leading a family, it's all about the logistics. It's all about putting the pieces together and having a plan because without a plan, you don't have a plan and things don't yeah, get I've done. Yeah, known Joe, Joe D was a quarterback, as I said, uh, growing up. Um, he was one of the older guys in our neighborhood and I've seen him organize 
all kinds of things. He worked with my dad for years. He should be the vaccine czar in the country. Stuff I agree would get completely. Done. <laughs> I'm just saying. By the way, Mary, could you introduce our very special guest today? I would love to. We have a very special guest today. His name is Bill Deering. Bill Deering, thank you so much for joining us today. Not only is he the most amazing person in the world, he also happens to be my father. And he is the one who has taught me, we've talked about him so much, taught me so many leadership skills and communication skills and just how to get stuff done. As we always say, the Deerings know how to get things done. So that was my maiden name for those of you that out there only know me as Mary Gamba. Uh, Mary Gamba, let me ask you this. Is Bill Deering, in fact, a retired corporate machine shop supervisor? He sure is. Is he, in fact, an Army veteran? He sure is. And there's a mistake here because it says in July, soon... He will be 81 years old. That is a <laughs> typo, is it not? That is not a typo. <laughs> Definitely not a typo. So, Dad, I mean, we we joke about it all the time that you're going to be 81 and look at you. Uh, what is the secret to staying fit in mind and body and spirit? Talk about that. Well, it, you, you just don't give up. You know, it's like uh, like now I'm on a, a 70 and over team, softball team. And uh, I also umpire. I, I'm Retired in 2005, semi-retired in 2005. After I left that, I had an offer to go out to do a consulting and to work for somebody. I said, no, I'll work for myself. Well, that's what I'm doing right now. So, yeah. uh, but, you know, getting out there and doing things and uh, you know, never sit still. Always get, keep yourself moving. Oh, by the way, Bill, check this out. Do you see this in the Star Ledger? You see your beautiful daughter there? Isn't she, isn't she beautiful? Who's that guy with her? Oh, the, leave, they leave that alone. <laughs> hey, Steve, way, Bill, did you notice over Bill Deering's shoulder what he has there on his desk? Over his right shoulder. What is that? Oh, that's my book. <laughs> I knew I liked your father. Oh. <laughs> you can leave it. <laughs> he didn't even know it was there. Thanks, Bill. Oh, um, yeah. hey, Bill, let me ask you something, in all seriousness. Um, you've been a leader, an entrepreneur. You physically take care of yourself, mentally take care of yourself, so much a big part of leadership. I got to ask you this. Did you know that Mary, now Mary Gamba, did you know that she was a leader from way back? Yes, I did. I'll go back to when she was five years old. She was outside. We were building the uh, village of 1976. I had five buildings in, this, in the side yard, and she was out there nailing the fence together stake by stake alongside me. And she was hauling the, the hammer by up by the claw. I said, Mary, you got a hole from the bottom. And then she really started to pound the nails. <laughs> <laughs> I was never afraid to get my hands dirty, Steve, just like you. She uh, played, uh, she played uh, softball on the, on the girls team. I, when I, had, I was a coach and manager for the girls team for both my girls. And uh, she could throw a football better than some of the men out there. I still can. Yes. I still can. I could still slide too. I showed my kids last summer that I'm still able to slide into second base and they couldn't believe it. So. Well, uh, we, I mean, let's edit that out, by the way. <laughs> you're, you're, okay. but, but, but one but, thing but, I want to say ahead, about Mary. leadership, I, I was just going to say, dad, you really taught me so much about leadership and relationship building. And, and, you know, Steve and I, when we met so many years ago, I, one of the things that Steve had said to me, like, where do you get this passion? And, and I said, it's just about talking to people. And dad, you taught me that in terms of relationship building. And, you know, talk about that a little bit. Where do you get that from? Well, let's start from, I had it all my life. But in 19, 1962, I was drafted <laughs> in the service. Two years, I was drafted. Back then, they had to draft. Then I, when I got drafted, I had a business at the, uh, back then, it used to be an SO station, which is Exxon. And I had to give up that. I had a five base station. I had three guys working for me. Well, when you get drafted, they say, they want you. You have to go. <laughs> well, I Dad, went. you can't go from 1960 to 2020. <laughs> so tell me tell me where the relationship <laughs> building part comes from. I'm bossy. Well, tell no, me. No, I have to say this because the learning from the, from the Army, they taught me how to be a leader and uh, give orders and get my men to do the right job and get the best out, best out of my men. I was a, uh, a dispatcher in a motor pool in Hawaii for two years. And when I left there, I got a, a, a scroll from uh, Lieutenant Colonel Strider saying what a great job I did and all that and everything else like that. But 
it was a learning experience, but that's how I, when I hire people, I uh, check with them that first of all, they're willing to learn. Are they, you know, are they gonna listen to me? I listen to them, but when I talk to them, I talk to them like I talk to my own daughter, right from the heart. You know, I, I make sure that yeah. they, they know that I'm with them. And a lot of times when you talk to people, you can tell, I can no, normally tell when somebody walks up to me the first time I meet them. You could pick up, there's a vibe that you pick up from that person when you talk to them. And then if they have a, like say, you have somebody tells you, I can't do that. And I, that's negative. I can do that. That's positive. This, see, that's, you know, that's what, what, I, what I learned. But then there's a thing where I hire people and the young, young person would be coming a machinist, would come in and he would screw up a shaft or something. He says, I, I'm, I guess so you're on fire. I said, no, that's my decision. Failure is one thing when you, when you make a mistake, turn around, go out and do it right. And that same guy worked for me, worked for me for so many years. And then he left me to be a supervisor in another place. But he always, I always said, go and make your step. You know what, Bill, you just, that's the essence of lessons in leadership. If people fail or make a mistake and don't learn, then they just lost. If you make a mistake and learn, that's what makes a great leader. By the way, I, I know we have to go right now, but I love watching Mary tell her dad, listen, we can't go all the way back to 1952, <laughs> 62. We got to move it along. Um, Wait, can well, I say something? You sure can. Yeah, we, we can we'll let it have something else. Go ahead. You know, 20 years ago, you made a leadership decision and you hired somebody. The first person, this person said, how are you doing, Steve? It was in a hospital. And you looked at it and you gave her your card. Now that's a sign of a good leader because now you got somebody alongside you, which is my daughter. And I'm very proud of her. And I'm, I'm, I'm proud of you for the job that you gave her. You know, that's great. Hey, Bill, I just want to say thank you to you because what you and your wife have done with Mary for her to be who she is, the leader she is, but more importantly, the person she is, I wouldn't be where I am. So I just want to say thank you to you, okay? So this thank is the last too. taping we're I doing just, this. I, want, I just want to keep this coming. This is fun. I want to. <laughs> yeah, well, listen, Bill, thank you, buddy. And this Best. is the last, I, I do have to say this. This is it. Like the second we sign off of this, there's, this is the last lessons in leadership with Steve in that space. So in this it's, space, it's a big we'll day. We'll have a new space soon. But um, oh, great for you. No, but, and, and by the way, thank you, Bill. Thank you, Mary. Thank you, everyone behind the scenes. Um, I'm blessed. I'm lucky. I get to do what I love to do with people who are way better than I am. Thanks, everyone. This is Lessons in Leadership. That's Mary. That's Bill. That's Scarlin. That's Elvin. That's Frank. That's Sylvester. <laughs> We're good. See you next We're time. Oh, and by the way, Amy, on closed captioning, I'm sorry, Amy. You guys are the best. See you next time. This edition of Lessons in Leadership with me, Steve Adubato, and my colleague, Mary Gamba, is brought to you by Valley Bank, the Bucino Leadership Institute at Seton Hall University, New Jersey Sharing Network, Prager Metis, the International Union of Operating Engineers, Local 825, and Seton Hall University, showing the world what great minds can do since 1856. This is Mary Gamba. If you want more leadership tips and tools, log on to stand-deliver.com. That's stand-deliver.com. Promotional support for this edition of Lessons in Leadership with me, Steve Adubato, and my colleague, Mary Gamba, has been provided by NJ.com, NJBIA, and New Jersey Business Magazine, CIANJ, and Commerce Magazine. Construction companies work at the heart of our communities. So do the operating engineers of Local 825, who build our roads and bridges and ensure the safe transmission of energy that keeps us on the move. 
Local 825 works with contractors as partners in quality, safety, and training. Our achievements stand as monuments to collaboration that will last for generations. This message has been brought to you by the members of Operating Engineers Local 825. Better building begins here.